Hello and welcome to Community Conversation, the show that's for and about the people who live in Reading. In today's episode, I had the opportunity to sit down with Senator Jason Lewis, the state senator who represents Reading in the State House in Boston. Let's take a look in on that conversation. Well, hello. We are here with Senator Jason Lewis, who is the uh, representative for Reading and other communities at the State House in Boston. Thank you for being with us today, Senator Lewis. My pleasure. Thanks, Jason. Uh, <laughs> Jason's fine. Right, Thank Senator you, Kevin. I appreciate uh, you having me uh, back on your show. Yeah, well, it's great to have you back here, and we always look forward to the updates of what's, uh, what you've been up to and what's been going on. You've been serving just over a year now, right? and uh, you have uh, uh, did go through a re-election cycle in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. uh, so how how do you feel the first year has gone? Have you, where have you learned and, and, and kind of where are you? Uh, yeah, it's been, it's there? amazing that a year has passed already. Sure. Um, I first came in as the senator for Reading and several other communities in a special election right. uh, last April. And, uh, and then uh, we had, had to have a re-election already in November. Right. So last year was kind of a crazy year. But, uh, um, but things have gone really well. I've, uh, I've um, really enjoying representing the district. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful district to represent um, and um, have settled into the state Senate. Um, I was appointed to uh, chair the, the public health committee okay. um, for the state. So um, you know, I really wear two um, uh, hats. Uh, mm -hmm. First and foremost, of course, is representing my district sure. and the needs of the community, the six communities I represent, as the chair of the public health committee is looking at public health um, uh, policies uh, statewide. Okay. Oh, good. Well, maybe we'll talk a little bit about that towards the end of our, our time together. But I know one of the big things that has uh, just taken place is the passing of the state budget. Everyone's always right. concerned about the money. Yes. Uh, so give us a little bit of information about the process there and kind of what yeah. happened with the state budget yeah, this year. Yeah, so that is, that's, you know, the most important uh, work that the legislature does mm -hmm. each, each year. The state budget now is about $38 billion, so it's, it's sizable. Tidy chunk of change. It is, <laughs> and, you know, there's uh, many, many different... Um, uh, services and programs mm -hmm. uh, that are funded, uh, certainly our public schools, mm -hmm. uh, transportation, health care, um, you know, substance abuse, mental health, environment, many, many different areas that are important to sure. uh, uh, Reading and all of our communities. Process uh, starts in January and it wraps up at, uh, basically at the beginning of the new fiscal year, which was July 1st. Okay. And, um, I'm, it was a, a challenging year. Uh, budget's never easy, sure. but uh, just to keep uh, services basically level, there was about a 1.8 billion dollar uh, budget gap that okay. needed to be closed. So it was a difficult year, but I'm pleased we did increase funding for s education, mm -hmm. both um, K through 12 and also higher ed. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to increase local aid by about three okay. percent, and that that's funding that helps pay for police and fire and libraries, sure. local and other, roads, local and that services. Kind of thing, yeah. That's right. Um, and then there was a specific earmark for the town of Reading that I worked with um, representative um, uh, with um, uh, with our state uh, d uh, with Jim delegation Dwyer. exactly yeah. with uh, representative Dwyer and representative Jones yes. um, and they were able to include it in the House budget I was able to include it in the Senate budget okay. that was for twenty five thousand dollars specifically to make improvements to parks and playgrounds oh, in Reading. Okay. That was because of the, the tough winter that we had sure. caused a lot of damage. Sure. Um, that went through the budget in the legislature. The Governor Baker uh, actually ended up vetoing that, um, okay. and uh, among other things. But we were actually able to then mount an override. All right. uh, so we of, went of this whole veto. convoluted veto, process, yeah. but we overrode the governor's veto, sure. which required a two-thirds vote in each chamber right. and there were several other o uh, v um, vetoes that were also overridden well, so as a result we did all end up getting that funding in okay. the budget specifically for the town of Reading. So let's talk a little bit about that uh, as you said that uh, both the House and the Senate passed a budget sent yes. it to the governor's desk and in Massachusetts the governor has a line item that's veto. It, that's so, right. so, the, so in Massachusetts the governor can go through and say yes 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 no no mm -hmm. no no or whatever he yes. whatever he deems to be appropriate um, and then he sends that back to the legislature. Mm -hmm. um, so kind what types of things did the governor veto this year on, on the budget? You, you, know, mentioned, you mentioned our parks yes, here in Reading. To be honest, <laughs> most of where, we, and this is not just uh, Governor Baker, this sure. is true with Governor Patrick and yeah. others, generally the difference of opinion is over earmarks. Sure. Now legislators um, love feel earmarks. Earmarks are important <laughs> because that's funding that we specifically direct to programs right. in our own districts. And right. the argument is that 
you know, as the state senator for this Middlesex, fifth mm -hmm. Middlesex district, I'm in a good and, and and along with the state representatives in a good position to know, you know, what it is sure. that Reading needs, you and know, uh, what Wakefield needs or other another community. Yeah, and as a representative mm -hmm. of those communities, right. you actually have a responsibility to, to see to, that those to things that. Th that exactly. Happen, yeah. And the way we come up with these is, you know, the beginning of the budget cycle, talk to, you know, the board of selectmen members, mm -hmm. the town manager, the school committee. And then obviously there's various requests and you have to prioritize right. those. So that's how we kind of came up with um, with Representative Dwyer and Jones and myself. You know, this sure. was a, something we wanted to do for the town of Reading, was right. specifically for parks and playgrounds. The the alter the other side, the view of the go the administration, the governors often they want to have maximum flexibility right. in <laughs> in how money is is spent. Sure. So they're and, looking at big uh, ticket so there's, items. There's, there's a lot of times there's diff that's why there's differences of opinion sure. on on uh, specific earmarks. So that's so a lot of what Governor Baker I mean out of a 38 billion dollar budget he only vetoed about 160 million dollars okay. of, of spending. So there's a lot of common ground so the, there. The vast majority of the budget we were in agreement on. Right. right. Um, but uh, but of that 160 million that he vetoed the legislature then essentially overrode the governor and put back a bit more than half of that. A bit more than half, okay. Um, so we still have a budget, I sh you know, to work, make sure to point out that, that, you know, that is that is balanced sure, okay, based good. on the revenues that we're expecting. Okay. And so we do think it's fiscally responsible. Good. And, you know, just to be clear, a balanced budget is actually a requirement for yes. the state. That, that's, you know, not that that's not a good, yep. good, uh, uh, use of your time and all that uh, and congratulations on getting yeah, a balanced budget we, but, that, you're, but right, you're actually required to as well so we are required to we uh, unlike the federal government right. you know we can't run a deficit right i think um, sometimes so people are do. confused by that yes. because they, they know the federal government mm -hmm. does run and can run deficits but state and local cannot mm -hmm. exactly and so right. so sometimes it can be a wrestling match over those last yes couple of hundred million dollars a million dollars or whatever to that's make sure right. you get that to, that's get right. That right we and and you know we obviously don't know exactly how much revenue we'll, we'll take in based right. on taxes and fees we have to do it based on uh, the best estimate we have and that's why sometimes in the during an, a budget year if revenues are coming in lower than anticipated, right. there are times when we have to make adjustments, sure, uh, but sure. we, we really prefer not to have to do that. Right. And you get difficult. quarterly reports or whatever on that kind Actually, of thing. Actually, monthly. Monthly yes. reports, okay. Wow, mm -hmm. so that's, that's kind of right. specific yes. for, for something as big as state government. Yep, yeah. we're tracking um, you know, every month what the revenues are and, and, and sure. also spending. So when, when so. would you suddenly realize that maybe there is a problem and you might have to make an adjustment? Is after one month, two months, three months? I mean, Usually it, it would one be One month would seem soon. reactionary to right. me. Right, one month yeah. would be soon. I, I'd say usually Usually it's maybe six months, uh, four okay. to six months into the fiscal year. And again, you hope you're not in that situation. Right. Um, but unfortunately, we were in this situation last fiscal sure. year. Um, so we did actually have to make some mid-year budget corrections. But sure. um, usually when you're pretty far in, or at least you know, close to halfway, right. if it's pretty clear that the expected revenues, uh, that the revenues are coming in lower than expected, then, then, mm -hmm. adjust, then you have to look at the spending. Uh, of course, we all adjustments. hope that revenues come in mm -hmm. at expectation yes. or even a little or higher. Even higher. Most um, years they actually come in uh, at or higher. Okay, but uh, there's always some uncertainty. Sure, absolutely. Um, so uh, you, you had mentioned the uh, parks um, and uh, playgrounds. Mm -hmm. Anything else specific in the governor's budget that mm -hmm. he uh, that he vetoed that the legislature then overrode and put back in the budget? I know there was something about early child education. And that yes, that's thing. that's been an area that's important to to certainly to me and, and many in the legislature. It's trying to expand our support we for early education. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we talked a bit before about K through 12 right. and, and higher ed, right. but also there's a lot of uh, big uh, body of research that shows that um, early education, we're talking about three-year-olds and four-year-olds, mm -hmm. is really important in giving uh, children, particularly from low-income families, you know, a, a, a good start in life and okay. it can help to um, close the achievement gap in our schools. Okay. So um, there was some additional funding there to try to ex expand that, but also we had some um, grants for full day kindergarten that were in the budget okay. um, to help communities uh, expand their kindergarten from half day to yeah. full day. They, they were, the governor didn't agree with us on some of that funding, but we put that back. Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, that, you know, that's going to be helpful as well for, for sort of those younger, you know, younger age right. kids. So in, in a quick uh, thing, how does, how does the legislature go about deciding what to try to override and what not? I mean, that seems to me like you, just, you can't do it all, you know, so how do you decide right. which things are important and which things are, which things you're capable of overriding, which things you're not? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a good question. It's, it's sort of like the, uh, just the way the whole budget is put together. 
Um, we do have um, a senator who chairs the Ways and Means Committee, okay. and the House of Representatives has a representative mm -hmm. who chairs, so they take the lead. And then really they solicit input from, you know, in the case of the Senate, from each of the individual senators mm -hmm. on what their priorities are. So I submitted uh, a letter you know, detailing um, what, um, in the beginning of the budget process, what my mm -hmm. priorities were. And then after the governor issued his vetoes, you know, here's the vetoes that I really are most important to my district sure. to override. Sure. And then all of that is compiled and uh, and try to um, choices are made ch make choices yeah. based on, uh, on, on uh, meeting as many of those priorities as possible. Mm -hmm. But it's... Um, it, it, it works reasonably well, although um, you know, no, no, no process like that is going to be sure. uh, foolproof. <laughs> right, right. Well, it's interesting to hear about that process, mm -hmm. and it's good to have a year where we were able to get the budget cycle done on time. I know the Herben yes. year is where we have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, had to extend that process into the new fiscal year mm -hmm. and, and that kind of thing. It's yeah. good to see that the governor and the legislature are working together yeah. to uh, to make sure that that comes about so that the budget is, mm -hmm. is done on time. And yeah, I think the new to your point, Kevin, I think that's worth emphasizing. You know, we do have obviously a legislature that's r dominated by Democrats and our sure. governor is a Republican, but um, we've been, I think, really working very well together. And, um, and, and as I pointed out earlier, having the governor issue some vetoes is very typical. I mean, yeah. Governor yeah. Patrick did the exact same yeah. thing, yeah. and yeah. so there's nothing unusual about that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, the, and, 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 and the legislature often overrides some of right. those. Right. Um, but we've made a lot of progress working together with the governor, not just on the budget, but also, for example, on making reforms to the MBTA sure. you know, in light of the, the what failures this winter, we right? had this yeah. winter. And so uh, some of that was actually included as part of the budget. Okay. Uh, for example, the new um, uh, Fiscal Management Control Board, mm -hmm. which we actually put in place, uh, included that in the budget. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. certainly that's something that people in Reading are going to be interested in hearing more mm -hmm. about as that comes about, yes. because very reliant on the commuter rail in particular here mm -hmm. in Reading, and I know what some of your other uh, communities absolutely. in your district are as well. Very important to the whole district. Yes, absolutely. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to take a short break here and uh, have a few messages. We'll be returning in a moment or two. We're talking with Senator Jason Lewis. You're watching Community Conversation on RCTV. I got no balls, so losing. Sorry, he's in being fit. Shock him, Joe's a road all the time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right, this isn't happening. He'll be fine. Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Shock him. Thank you, and welcome back to Community Conversation. I'm hitting, sitting here talking with Senator Jason Lewis, who is a representative in Boston um, of, of Reading and several other communities in the district, and we've been talking about some of his activities uh, that he's been engaged in the last year or so. We talked about the budget a mm -hmm. little while backwards. Well, we want to talk about something a little more fun than the budget. <laughs> <laughs> some people find it dry. I find it interesting, and some people find it dry. Uh, one of the things that's been in the news recently mm -hmm. has been the reaccreditation for the Stone Zoo and that's, right. you know, in our neighboring town of Stoneham. Uh, what's happening at the state level to kind of help that mm -hmm. come about? It is a very kind of important resource for this for this Definitely, area. yes. It's it's an important uh, uh, asset to our whole region. It's uh, it's a wonderful small zoo right. and uh, very um, appealing to families, particularly with young kids. Sure. And, uh, you know, I've done some good things in recent years to improve the exhibits there. But uh, um, you know, the, but their their funding's been been very tight. It's mm -hmm. it's. it's um, a partnership between Zoo New England, which is a nonprofit entity, okay. and the state government. Okay. Um, and and okay. th but the state uh, share of funding has, mm -hmm. you know, as we went through the Great Recession, has been um, uh, scaled back. So it's made okay. it very challenging. So right now they are trying to g uh, be reaccredited um, by the Association of uh, Zoos and Aquariums. Is that a national it's organization? A, exactly, okay. a national group. Um, it's important because it allows them to exchange uh, animals with other accredited okay. zoos. It supports them in their marketing and their fundraising efforts. Right. So it's a very important uh, sort of seal of approval. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they have to go through this every, I think, three years. Okay. The uh, As part of the reaccreditation, there were some issues with the facilities at Stone Zoo. For example, they uh, just need to, you know, have um, the bathroom facilities need to be upgraded. There's All some right. other buildings and so on. Um, and w the legislature several years ago issued uh, what's known as a bond authorization for funding for Zoo New England mm -hmm. for capital improvements. Okay. But it's up to the 
administration to actually um, issue, release the money. Okay. So we have been ma trying to make the case to Governor Baker and Secretary Ash, who's the new Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, that mm -hmm. you know Zoo New England, including the Stone Zoo, is a very important resource. Sure. Uh, they provide recreational benefits, but also educational and scientific uh, and conservation mm -hmm. benefits, and we should release the funding to them. So we're making progress, um, and I think we'll get there, but um, it has certainly been a challenging time for, um, sure. for, the, for Zoo New England. And, and what, uh, what kind of input have you had specifically on that project in terms of yeah. helping that process along? Well, so numerous conversations uh, with um, the administration, mm -hmm. um, particularly with Secretary Ash and his team. You know, they, are, they came into office not very familiar with okay. the Stone Zoo or Zoo New England, which includes the Franklin Park Zoo. Okay. You know, helping them understand uh, the history of the zoos, the sure. funding history, what benefits they provide. Um, they've had lots of good questions. Um, mm -hmm. We've been sort of been working to make sure those are addressed. Also, um, you know, they made requests for longer term uh, financial plans, okay. um, which we've worked with the management of Zoo New England on. We also held a community um, forum at Stone Zoo at the end of July. Um, and, uh, and that was great. We had probably about 100 people attend. Oh, okay, good. And John Linehan, who's the um, president and CEO of Zoo mm -hmm. New England, began as a zookeeper <laughs> 20 some years or 30 yeah. years ago, and now he's he's the, the president. Um, uh, you know, talked about what the zoo's been doing, sure. latest news and updates, and some of the you know um, uh, plans that they have for the future. So. Mm -hmm. We're, um, we're just trying to make sure that we show how much community support there is mm -hmm. for the institution mm -hmm. and that they're worthy of, um, of continued support from state government. All right, excellent. Well, we'll look forward to, to that accreditation coming through and we'll see we what so. happens next with all of that. I know something that's very kind of near and dear to the hearts of people in Reading, I know in other communities as well, is uh, kind of what has been billed as the crisis mm -hmm. of, of opiate addiction and, and, yes. and overdoses and that kind of thing. What kind of things are happening at the state mm -hmm. level to kind of help combat that? Yeah, such a um, heartbreaking issue. Um, you know, um, we've had seen the number of deaths from o opioid right. overdoses, heroin overdoses, you know, really cl climbing um, significantly over the last few mm -hmm. years. Um, there's a lot of great work going on in the community level, for example, in Reading with the Reading Coalition Against sure. Substance Abuse doing fantastic work. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the, the, we know we have a lot more to do. And the, the good news is that Governor Baker made this a, a priority for right. his administration. Our attorney general has made this a priority, the legislature has. So the governor um, launched, as soon as he came into office, he created a, uh, a working group on, uh, on the opioid crisis. And mm -hmm. they came out with their report, uh, which had 65 specific recommendations. Okay. They're very specific. <laughs> well, that's they, good, at least they're they, specific. Absolutely, yeah. and they deal with um, uh, prevention, mm -hmm. intervention, uh, treatment and recovery, so okay. all the across the entire spectrum. And the good news is, uh, and I've met with Secretary uh, Sutters, who's the Secretary of Health and Human Services. She mm -hmm. led this effort. They right. are, you know, already moving forward on implementation on the, on many of these. Um, there are, you know, there's a lot of collaboration with local um, substance abuse coalitions mm -hmm. and healthcare providers and law enforcement. So I do think we're getting we're getting more traction. Okay. Um, and I do think the resources for treatment in particular, uh, you know, are, are being increased. We increased them in the budget, for sure. example, and the governor sure. has also um, um, re released additional funding. So we're making progress, but um, we know this is a, this is a uh, you know, an ongoing right. challenge. What, in what ways is, is the state looking to partner with local mm -hmm. organizations on this issue beyond you know, money, which is obviously yep. extremely important, but are there other kind of initiatives happening on that level? Um, so definitely funding is an important part, right. both for educational initiatives, but and then also, co of course, for treatment. Sure. Um, we are trying to um, strengthen the prescription monitoring program. So okay. this is a, a program that uh, doctors are going to be required to participate in, you mm -hmm. know, when they're prescribing opioids, All right. so that we can keep better track of the system, make sure that monitoring, monitoring so you know, okay. we make sure that there's no bad actors in terms of right. uh, physicians or or patients that are shopping around to try to get, you mm -hmm. know, the uh, uh, prescriptions for opioids. Mm -hmm. So that I think by improving that system, we'll get it, you know, okay. while. You, you know, when it's for legitimate purposes, we want to make sure that people can get the pain medication sure. they need, but we want to make sure it's not being used for, uh, being misused. Right. So that, right. That's, an, that's an example um, there. And, um, um, you know, just making sure that there are enough um, beds available. Mm -hmm. um, we, we at the treatment center. At centers, the treatment, right. Yeah. So we, t we, t we do pretty well with detox, which mm -hmm. is the, uh, you know, which is um, 
uh, short term, sure. but then where we run into uh, lack of capacities typically f with um, longer term um, okay. supports for individuals who are recovering from, mm -hmm. you know, from substance ad addiction, and, um, and, th and that's critical that, we, uh, sure. that those supports are in place. Sure. Well, good. Uh, you know, hopefully we're making some headway mm -hmm. in that. I know, as I said in Reading, it's kind of a hot button issue, and I know yeah. it is in a lot of our communities, yes. particularly with the younger people. And so, you know, we can't uh, emphasize enough the importance of the education mm -hmm. efforts and the funding that's available there, as well yep. as some of these other things yep. that are happening. And, and by the way, on that point, in terms of young people, you know, the Reading Public Schools and the Reading community has really, in many ways, been a, a model for. Um, you know, engaging at you know, okay. and in terms of um, not just substance abuse, but behavioral health in general. Sure. So, because a lot of times th these issues are very interconnected. Yeah. And there's really, really good work going on um, um, in the in the public schools here in Reading on 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 that front. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we look forward to again, as I said, making progress mm -hmm. on that front, and and uh, maybe some other time you can come and give us an update as well as mm -hmm. as to how that is going and how those earmarks are working themselves out in Absolutely. a practical way in Reading and in some of these other communities. Um, speaking about uh, uh, Reading Public Schools, mm -hmm. uh, which is something that's on everybody's mind all the time, I know there was a recent report that came out on the Chapter 70 funding. With those of you who aren't familiar, Chapter 70 funding is education funding mm -hmm. that comes from the state to local communities. And there was a review commission uh, report yes. that just came out. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, one of the, I've been in the legislature now about uh, six years. Um, I was in the House of Representatives sure. before the Senate, and you know, one of the main priorities, one of the things that really you know, got me interested in running for the state government was our school funding. Mm -hmm. And I think we've, we've seen with rising costs for health insurance, with rising um, special education needs, right. uh, technology changes in our schools, you know, so many things that our education, our Chapter 70 funding formula mm -hmm. didn't anticipate when right. it was created in 1993. So we've been, myself and, 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 and some other legislators have been pushing for years now to have that formula be reassessed. Okay. And uh, that led to the f formation of this uh, Blue Ribbon Commission, which was charged with looking at all of this. Mm -hmm. They came out with their preliminary report uh, last in late June. Okay. And it was um, very, um, uh, you know, it was, it was very heartening to see that they basically acknowledged that, you know, with health care costs and mm -hmm. with special education costs in particular, we that the formula is underestimating you know what okay. reading schools need sure. and what you know wakefield and and, and 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 other communities so they are going to be coming out with their final report uh in november mm -hmm. they are still looking at other issues like um like behavioral health like right. um technology mm -hmm. professional development various other you know aspects okay. and then my hope is based on that we will then be able to go to the uh, the leadership in the House and the Senate, as well as Governor Baker, mm -hmm. and starting in next year's budget, we can hopefully start to build a multi-year plan okay. to, you know, to, to make adjust sure that the formula that, that we appropriately. make those adjustments appropriately yeah. to reflect what the actual, you know, needs are of our of our schools. All right, excellent. Well, we look forward to seeing what happens there, and uh, I know that's mm -hmm. near and dear in the hearts of people in Reading mm -hmm. as to as to uh, what's going on with that, and so we yeah. we hope to see that in a more appropriate. Uh, formula is used to determine what there what needs to be done. Uh, just quickly, um, uh, we did mention at the beginning that you're the chair of the Public Health Committee. We only have a mm -hmm. minute or two left, sure. uh, but is there anything that's happening in that area beyond the things that we've mm -hmm. talked about already? Yeah, so that's an interesting area. We're looking at legislation dealing with a, a, a wide range of you know public health issues, but one in particular that uh, I think is important is um, uh, looking at um, e-cigarettes. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, you We've know, been talking about that here in Reading. We were talking about it. So for folks who are watching the show may not know their new product, they're battery operated. Um, it's uh, basically a way to consume nicotine um, right. but without smoking. Right. And um, uh, they're catching on really quickly and they're com really completely unregulated. Um, the Reading Board of Health has taken steps to, right. you know, have some re regulation in the local sure. level, but there's no state or federal regulation. Okay. So that there's some idea. Uh, proposed bills before the Public Health Committee okay. that would look at, for example, having a minimum uh, legal sale age, making sure that the um, the products are safe. Right. Um, and so we're looking hard at that right now as, uh, so as, sure. as something that is probably um, 
you know, important to do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think state. anything that delivers a mm -hmm. drug like that mm -hmm. sh probably should be regulated on some level, and mm -hmm. it's difficult for individual towns to have all these different regulations. Right. Probably mm -hmm. having a state level mm -hmm. idea of, of how that's yeah. regulated is probably a exactly. good idea. And that's what we're getting right now, sort of a patchwork across different right. cities and towns. Right. Um, right. So I, I'm, I'm hopeful we'll uh, we'll put together a, you know, sensible legislation there, and and. and uh, Hopefully that can get done this session. Okay, well, thank you for uh, dropping by here today and sharing with us a little bit about what's going on at the State House in Boston. I've been talking with Senator Jason Lewis, your state senator here from Reading, and uh, I know uh, I think people can contact you through your office in Boston. Yep. You have an email address. Absolutely. And yep. what, 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 what uh, is the email so address? So uh, they can uh, call me, email me, a tweet. I also have office hours okay. every month in Reading at, right. at the Senior Center, but best thing to do is. Uh, just uh, email is uh, jason.lewis at masenate.gov or 617-722-1206 or right. just Google me. <laughs> um, and you're there. <laughs> yep. Um, make sure they uh, they put in uh, uh, Senator Jason Lewis. Otherwise, they might get Jason Lewis, the male model oh, of well. Sex in the City. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be hard to determine which one. <laughs> which one, right? You know, sometimes can be confusing. Sure. Well, thank you for joining us today, okay. Senator Lewis. And we My appreciate pleasure. Uh, thank hopefully you, maybe Kevin. Sometime in the future, you can drop by again. Mm -hmm. You've been watching Community Conversation on RCTV. I got no polls, so I'm losing. Shocking guys that run all the time. Just had a few drinks. This can't be happening. Are we clear? Clear. We just buzzed. Just buzzed? You didn't tell us that, sir. You're right. This isn't happening. You'll be fine. Yeah, I feel good. Really? No, not really. Buzz driving. Maybe we should stop acting like it's no big deal. Shocking. Thank you for watching this episode of Community Conversation, and thank you to Senator Jason Lewis for dropping on by and letting us have a chat. Be sure to watch out for our next episode. We'll see you then. Take care. Bye. <laughs>